and good morning. I do chair the Center for American Progress Task Force on Poverty along with Peter Edelman of the Georgetown University Law School. And in addition to the 37 million people living below the poverty level that you mentioned, an additional nearly 50 million live below 200 percent of the poverty level, making 90 million people living below 200 percent of the poverty level. One health crisis, one family emergency away from poverty's door. It really doesn't have to be this way. The Center, for American the Center for American Progress Task Force recommends that the United States set a national goal of cutting poverty in half in the next 10 years. To accomplish this goal, the task force proposes 12 recommendations grouped under four principles. Promote decent work, people should work, and jobs should pay enough to ensure that employees and their families avoid poverty. Provide opportunity for all. Children should grow up in conditions that maximize their opportunities for success, <coughs> and adults should have opportunities throughout their lives to connect to work and become better educated. Ensure economic stability. Americans should not fall into poverty when they cannot work or when work is unavailable, and help people build wealth. All Americans should have opportunities to build assets that allow them to weather periods of flux and volatility. These four principles and the following recommendations will cut poverty in half only if they work in tandem. Through the strategies outlined below, America can cultivate a new cycle of prosperity. To promote decent work, the Center for American Progress Task Force recommends that we raise and index the minimum wage to half the average hourly wage, expand the earned income tax credit and the child tax credit, Promote unionization by enacting the Employee Free Choice Act and guarantee child care assistance to low-income families and promote early education. Compared to other countries, in this country, the poverty rate does not represent low work effort. People who work really should be able to maximize that work to get out of poverty. And by doing just three of these things, increase the minimum wage, expand the earned income tax credit and child credit, and provide child care assistance, we could cut poverty by 26 percent instantly, according to modeling done by the Urban Institute. To provide opportunity for all, the task force recommends that we create two million housing opportunity vouchers that will allow low-income families to live in communities rich with opportunity. We need to connect disadvantaged and disconnected youth to work and school, simplify the Pell Grant so that higher education is more accessible to all, and help former prisoners find stable employment and reintegrate into community. To ensure economic security, the task force recommends that we ensure equity for low-wage workers in the unemployment insurance system and that we modernize means-tested benefits programs to develop a coordinated system to help workers and their families. And to help poor families build wealth, the task force recommends that we reduce the high cost of being poor and increase access to financial services and expand and simplify the savers credit to encourage savings for education, home ownership, and retirement. In addition, the nation's infrastructure is crumbling, and as we think about doing that, we need to think not only about how to invest in infrastructure, but how to build the workforce capacity so that low-income people can get those jobs. Many low-income people are being left behind because the communities they live in are left behind without broadband, without public transportation. And we need never forget that many people who are poor are poor because of poor health. And while we work to try to increase access to health care coverage, we need to know that the places where people live are often making them sick. People who are in low-income communities have little access to fresh fruits and vegetables because of the absence of grocery stores, little access to exercise because there aren't safe streets or places to exercise. These need to be part of our investments. Poverty is multidimensional. Its causes and its effects are myriad, and its solutions are multidimensional. And when done well, the benefits can be uh, multidimensional as well. For example, investing in the construction of a hospital in a low-income community, when the project is tied to job training and local hiring, delivers immediate construction jobs, eventual health services, and long-term community benefits creating tax credits and incentives for affordable housing in mixed income communities can bring families in closer contact with jobs but children in contact with good schools. Poverty results in adverse economic effects for the entire nation and alleviating poverty can improve all of our lives. Thank you.